What one Albuquerque police officer saw last September. How far along are you? Oh my gosh. Okay. Shook him to his core. It caught me off guard. It shocked me. I was pretty upset. And the decision right. he made in that very moment. So here's what I'm going to do, okay? Changed lives forever right and now. touched hearts around the world. This is an act that's beyond anything I'd ever seen. And I'll probably never see it again. When Officer Ryan Holett swore to protect and serve the people of Albuquerque, New Mexico, he wasn't fulfilling a childhood dream. In fact, becoming a cop was his backup plan. I always thought, if, if everything else fails, I'll just go do that. Ryan's real dream was thousands of miles away from the place he'd always called home. I wanted to go be a missionary pilot flying bush airplanes in Africa. A far-off dream that was soon well within reach. I had my pilot's license when I was 17. I went to college. I got my aviation maintenance degrees. What do you look forward to every day? Ryan tells our Narissa Knight that after college, he decided joining the police force would turn his dream into reality and achieve his ultimate goal. I really was focused on getting into the air support unit. I could work, get a bunch of experience that would be very useful in my later goals of possibly still going and flying in the bush. But while training to become a cop, Ryan realized he didn't need to travel halfway around the world to find people in need. People like to think that the people who need help are the people over there. They never stop and look around and say, the people here need help. So that's what Ryan Holitz has been doing on the streets of Albuquerque ever since he became a police officer in 2011. When I got out from the academy and started working on the streets, I realized that I couldn't leave the streets. And I enjoyed taking calls and um, just being in the thick of everything. On a Saturday in September, one of those calls brought the cop to this convenience store for what seemed like a fairly routine assignment. Somebody was trying to steal beer, and the store clerk wanted an officer out to tell them to leave. By the time Officer Holitz and his trainee arrived, the would-be beer thief was gone. But something else caught his attention. I don't know why, but I just happened to look off to the side of the building, and down in the grass, I saw Tom and Crystal. Holitz turned his body camera on, and he approached the couple. Hello, folks. How are you guys doing today? What all you got in your hands there, ma'am? The six-year police uh, veteran had been on the job long enough to know the answer. So I'm not gonna lie, it looks like you guys are getting ready to shoot up over here. It's a scene he's become all too familiar with. Any officer who works anywhere in America right now is constantly facing the effects of this opioid crisis that everybody's talking about. But what he thought would be another routine arrest was about to take an alarming turn. As they were trying to hide the needles and trying to move stuff around because they saw a police officer walking up, when she moved, that's when I noticed that she was very pregnant. His reaction was immediate. If you watch the lapel video and you can see I'm talking to them and then all of a sudden I notice it and I stop everything. Ryan Holitz isn't just a police officer, he's also a father of four young children. The thought of what Crystal was doing to her unborn baby upset and outraged him, and he couldn't hide his emotion. And so I blurted out what was on my mind. Are you pregnant? Why are you gonna be doing that stuff? It's gonna ruin your baby. Ryan's raw honesty brought Crystal Champ to tears. You're, you're gonna kill your baby. It was clear she'd also thought about that, and it was just as devastated by it as the officer. Well, at that point, I my my primary concern was for her well-being and that of her her unborn child. All right, ma'am. What's your name? Crystal. All right. How far along are you? Oh my gosh. Okay. And the baby she was carrying wasn't her first child. Where's your second child at right now? Okay. Crystal confirmed what the officer feared most. She just shot up. This morning? 
How expensive is your habit right now? 40, 60, 100. What she said next, he never expected to hear. What do you think is going to happen to your child when it's born? Um, the baby is going up for adoption. Immediately? At that moment, her humanity broke through. I have never had anyone who's addicted tell me that they know that they can't take care of their child in their current circumstance, they? that they want the best for their child, and therefore they want to, someone to take their child and place them in a loving family. But that's exactly what Crystal intended to find for her unborn baby. Do you know who's going to adopt your baby? Oh. Do you have a tissue or something over here? The officer was done asking questions for now, and it wasn't really because he needed to find her a tissue. Really, that was kind of my excuse to stop because I was very emotional. Emotional because of what he knew was about to happen. As soon as she told me, the words left her mouth that she, she said, I'm looking for someone to adopt my baby. I asked her if she had found anybody and she told me no. I knew right then that I was going to offer. So why would a 27 year old husband and father of four offer to adopt the baby of a drug addicted stranger? For a cop whose mission in life is to help others, the answer is very simple. Because I was the one hearing her. When somebody asks for help, the person who hears is responsible. Crystal asked for help, and Officer Ryan was prepared to offer it. I turned off my camera, I went to my car to collect my thoughts. Officer Ryan Holitz was certain the couple he caught shooting up on the streets of Albuquerque would be going to jail. You have to realize at the gas station there's people with kids and stuff. The six year police veteran was wrong. The fact that she was pregnant put a stop to what I was thinking. Crystal Champs told the cop she was desperate to find someone to adopt her baby. But at eight months pregnant, time was running out. I knew right then that I was going to offer. First, he had to find a way to win her trust, to make him seem as someone other than a cop who would take her to jail. The only thing I could think to do was to show her a photograph my family, show her that we have children, that I understand what it's like to be a parent, to want the best for your child. Ryan tells our Nerissa Knight what he said next. I know you're looking for someone to adopt your baby. I know my wife. I know that she'll say yes. <laughs> and we are willing to adopt your baby if that's what you need. If she didn't want us to adopt the baby, then I would be willing to help her until the baby was born. His offer left Crystal in disbelief. She was shocked. The couple agreed to meet Officer Ryan the following day. He now needed to find his wife to let her know baby number five could be on the way. She was in the area that I worked at a friend's going away party. And so I, I showed up for the few minutes I had on my break. Ryan and Rebecca had talked about adopting or fostering someday, but with four children under the age of five, neither thought it would be anytime soon. I just walked up to her, she's holding her 10 month old baby Abigail and I said hey honey I just have to let you know I found this woman today she's shooting up heroin she's pregnant and I offered to adopt her baby just want to let you know did she think you were joking no but I think the way she puts it this is really gonna happen and she, she immediately just the way that she does okay let's do this <laughs> she really just smiled at that moment and said okay yeah she got really excited and she just said, okay. Winning over Rebecca was easy. What Officer Ryan didn't know is that he'd already won over Crystal as well. I've heard her mention that when I said it, she looked into my eyes and to see if I was telling the truth and she saw that I was. The next night, Holitz had dinner with Crystal and Tom and all four began planning for the baby's arrival. We put them up in a hotel and then we just you know, provided things as they needed and tried to assist in any way that we could with prenatal care. But there wasn't much time to prepare. Crystal went into labor five weeks early. I was very blessed that they let me in while the delivery was going on. The baby was born with heroin and meth in her system. For nearly two weeks, Ryan or Rebecca stayed with her at the hospital while she endured painful withdrawals. During one of his shifts, 
Ryan came up with her name. I was feeding her and holding her, praying for her, singing to her, and just said, you know, we have so much hope for you. And I said, that sounds about right. That's your name. And I told Rebecca, and she said, yeah, that's her name. After 11 days, Hope Crystal Holitz left the hospital and headed home to her new family. And our Narissa Knight paid a visit to baby Hope at home. Wow, she's so beautiful. How are you handling all this? Being a mom of five, all other five, you're amazing. It, it's busy, definitely very busy. But Rebecca has had plenty of practice caring for babies. I've spent the last five years learning how to do small children, and so another baby really wasn't that difficult. It's mostly the challenge of learning the older ones and their new stages. Hope hasn't had any complications since leaving the hospital and fits right in with her four siblings. She has the same color eyes as you guys. I know, and all of our children have blue eyes. Wow. Providing a loving home for Hope isn't the only thing the couple has done for Crystal and Tom. You're helping the birth parents too. You didn't give up on them. We believe that people are redeemable. Everyone is lost to a certain point and everybody is redeemable. The couple found a rehab center to sponsor Hope's birth parents. Both have been sober for two months. Officer Ryan says they're already preparing for life after rehab. They're working on helping them not only get established, but pick careers, pick a, a job that they might be interested in. I just want to continue to see them flourish, to become the best version of who they're capable of being. If you ask the Holitz, they don't believe what they're doing is extraordinary. But there are plenty of people who disagree. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I just, I couldn't believe it. When Sergeant Jim Edison heard what his officer was doing, he was moved to tears. I never met anybody so unselfish. Were you shocked by what he offered to do? I was. I mean, I thought my job was to teach him. I thought my job was to talk to him about going home safe and making mom proud. And here was this young man teaching me. The proud sergeant knew he had to find a way to honor Officer Holitz, so he wrote a letter nominating him for the department's first ever outstanding service to the community award. I knew he didn't want the recognition. I was very apprehensive. But when he read the letter to his department, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. Sergeant Edison shared some of what he wrote with our Nerissa Knight. I never thought I'd see anything like this act. Really an act beyond words, beyond expression, and frankly, in my mind, what a servant's heart actually looks like. His letter eventually reached the Oval Office. My sergeant called me and said, Ryan, you got a call from the White House. And I said, no, you're kidding. President Trump wanted to meet with Officer Ryan to discuss the opioid crisis in America. He also invited the Holitz to the State of the Union address, where he told the nation about what they'd done. Ryan and Rebecca, you embody the goodness of our nation, thank you. The couple received a rare bipartisan standing ovation. For a couple as modest as the Holitz, the attention has been unbelievable and unnecessary. That's not what we did it for. We, we did it for hope. She's enough of a blessing to do it all over again. We're just trying to uh, use this time to tell the world a message that maybe will encourage other people to do what they can to help others.